Hi, everyone. Hi, Cafe Lily. <laughs> I see you're here. Uh, yeah, that's okay. You can always watch me afterwards. Uh, then I did a recorded video that my sister thought was live, but it wasn't. Uh, of my gardens in the deck I showed. Anyway, today is the day. On Sundays, I do what's sold from the past week. And I think I'm going to do it uh, from like last Saturday, I mean last Sunday to this, to yesterday, Saturday. It'll be always be Sundays to Saturdays. So a week that way. Uh, this time, I think some of the Sunday things I already showed, so it's only a partial from last Sunday, but I only sold one thing today so far, and I'll put it on next week's. Uh, there was one item during the week, I think it was even past a week, uh, that's that was supposed to have sold but never paid, and eBay opened a case, and they still didn't pay, and I think by tomorrow I'll probably be able to relist it again. It was just a cute little polka dot blouse. Uh, hi, Bumblebee. <laughs> yes, I still didn't get my invoice, Bumblebee. You just don't care about getting paid, I don't think. Uh, I watched your son a couple times on his, uh, doing his jazz. Yeah, I like that when he plays the jazz. Uh, your sales cafe says her sales have been hit and miss. Poshmark has been slow. Yes, everything's slow. I didn't count up how many I sold here, but I did sell two Poshmark items this week. The rest were eBay, but there's only under 20 altogether. So still hasn't really picked up that much. Last week was a tiny bit better. But not so good. Hi, Posh Planet. Welcome in. Yeah, I'm glad you made it. Uh, yeah, tomorrow's the day that my handy man and his wife, handy people, <laughs> come to do the storm cellar doors. So actually, I think it's supposed to cool off a little bit for that one day. So... We're going to get a storm here uh, sometime like six, around six or seven o'clock tonight. I already gave uh, Dexter a melatonin because he's already acting funny. You know, they can tell there's a barometer change, of course, when a front's going to go through. And animals can feel that. Horses can, so I imagine dogs can too, and I think that that's why he gets nervous, even when it's still sunny out, and uh, it doesn't look like it's going to storm, but he gets nervous before it ever, ever comes. So I gave him his melatonin. I'll wait till after this broadcast to put his thunder shirt on, and uh, hope he. Isn't too bad. You just had a bad storm today. Yeah, it's rolling through. Well, we'll get, we're, you're from, um, where are you from? You're from west of me, like Bumblebee is. Bumblebee, did it go through your, uh, your state yet? My deck looks great. Posh Planet saw that. Yes. Uh, there's no fixing my washing machine. My washing machine has been fixed numerous times. It's very, very old. It used to be my mother's. And who knows how old it was when I got it. Uh, after she passed away, I took the washer and dryer because mine was on its last legs. And I brought them here. So who knows how old they are. Very, very old. So this time when it went, 
it made such horrible gear wrenching noises. Uh, then I couldn't even turn it off. I had to pull the plug. It was horrible. So I think it probably ground up all the gears that were in there. I don't think there's any fixing it. I'm going to get a new washing machine. What I should do is buy one from the fix it man, the appliance guy, because he takes older machines that have the good parts, unlike today's machines, and he refurbishes them. So they last longer, they're easier for them to work on. And uh, I may give him a call and see. I don't need anything fancy. I just need something uh, to just wash his clothes. Doesn't have to be fancy. Uh, oh yeah, he would bring it and fix it up. The uh, any any place I'd buy a washing machine, they deliver. Even if I bought a washing machine from Home Depot, they deliver. I think they have free delivery. And a lot of times they'll take your old washing machine out. So I'm not real sure about that, but <clears throat> I would hope so. Hi, Sue. You're in Michigan. Okay. Uh, yeah, storms went through there already. Yeah, they're going to hit here about 6 is what the radar is showing. So I'm hoping to get through this before any storms come. <clears throat> yeah, so let's see what else here. I made notes. While the handyman people were here looking at what I wanted them to do, uh, we're talking about gardens, and as we walked through the front garden, a monarch butterfly threw, uh, flew up past us. That's the first one I've seen in two years. And uh, this, the lady, handy person, <laughs> she's seen a couple this year. So hopefully I will see more. Sue, Sue doesn't live in Florida. She lives in Erie, Pennsylvania. She'll get the storm after we do, if it goes out, if it doesn't go south. You've had quite a few storms. You had a storm yesterday, or it, it missed us all together, or it missed me all together, but uh, either yesterday or the day before, it hit Erie, though I saw it. You know, after all this, I usually have two hummingbird feeders out every year. And this year, because of all this mess with the COVID thing, it just, I completely forgot to put my hummingbird feeders out in April. Completely forgot. And Early April is when the male hummingbirds come and scout out feeders. So if you don't have them up fairly early, uh, you won't get many hummingbirds. So uh, I didn't put them up this year. And no, sh I didn't put the hummingbird feeders up, but I will definitely put them up again. Next year, I hope I haven't lost my hummingbirds because, you know, they do come back to the same feeders year after year after year. So I hope I didn't screw it up. <laughs> uh, you haven't seen any monarchs at your house, Sue? No, I hadn't seen. Before, two years ago, I saw a couple. And then last year, I didn't see any again. I keep growing the milkweed out there, but I didn't have any chrysalises, chrysalis <laughs> on there. But um, 
Yes, so I've seen one so far this year. At least there's one. There must be more. <clears throat> yes, they send out scouts. <laughs> yeah, when I, I used to have a huge amount of hummingbirds come. This was even before my husband died. We have video. It's not even not on this computer. It's on my one of my hard my exterior hard drives. Uh, they were buzzing all around. And if you'd go over and stand by the feeder and put your finger out, they'd land on your finger. That's how many there were of them. They're very feisty little things. And uh, if they don't like where you're standing, they squawk at you. They're great little <laughs> birds. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I hope just missing a year, it won't screw up my amount of hummingbirds. Now I don't get that many anymore. I usually get six to eight a year recently. <clears throat> yes, but I, I read up a lot about them. I read up all about their nests, their teensy weensy nests and where they nest at. And they probably nest in my row of uh, spruce trees. But to see their nests, it would be a miracle because they're so tiny and hidden. Uh, yes, but they do send out their scouts. I just kept putting feeders out every year, every spring, early spring, April. Uh, you just keep putting them out every year, every year, and they finally find you. I also always hung a bat near the feeder, always hung a hanging basket of some flower that they like. It has to be a tubular flower like uh, fuchsia. I would hang a big basket of blooming fuchsia or some other flower. And it has, usually I would pick red or it's, they say that that's the color that is, they are drawn to red or a dark pink or something like that and hang a hanging basket of flowers. And I've always planted flowers that, the, that attract hummingbirds. So you can read, uh, there's lots of flowers that attract hummingbirds. Uh, but they mostly like the, the tubular flowers they stick their little beak into and get the nectar. Uh, no, I just have sugar water. It's, it's uh, one part sugar like four cups of water and one cup of sugar, and then you simmer it on the stove so it melts. It doesn't crystallize because if you don't, if you don't, you don't want to boil it, but if you don't simmer it, get it hot so it all melts down, it doesn't reconstitute when you take it out in the colder weather. So you want to keep it liquid and, uh, I would make up that almost every day when I was getting a lot of them. It doesn't have to be a red liquid like they sell you. So very cheap to make. You make your own nectar. Uh, is that your spider wart? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, just four parts, uh, one part sugar to four parts water. That's all it is. So, um, I am going to, uh, I have to tell you, I see these two marks on my arm, this one and that one. When I went out there just a little while ago to collect eggs, Susie, it wasn't Susie, it was Sasha, was on the nest, and I reached under her to get eggs. She was sitting on three None of them probably are hers. 
So I reached under her to get the eggs, and she turned around and gave me two pecks that really hurt. <laughs> she usually doesn't peck me that hard. And she was mad. So maybe one of them was her egg. I don't know. Uh, she's not real broody anymore. She does come out off the nest now and go out with the rest of the chickens. But she likes being in there. And she, the rest of the chickens, uh, she's the low chicken on the in the pecking order because they're not nice to her. So she sleeps in the nesting box at night, I notice. She doesn't get on the roost with the rest of them because I think they've knocked her off the roost a couple of times. And uh, she is low man on the totem pole. So I'm going to show you what I sold this past week, and then I have some other things to ask you or to tell you. And so let's go to what I sold. And I'm going to have share my screen. <clears throat> okay, here's the first item I sold this last Sunday. And this is a J. Jill plus size linen pants. And they had uh, elastic uh, waistline. They were a 1X. And they sold, I think this is the second time they sold. I think these were sent back once because they just didn't fit the person right. So uh, I put them back into inventory and they sold fairly soon again. So those went to Glen Allen, Virginia. And they sold for $26.09, which was the sale price. Yeah. And next thing is this bathing suit. This is also the second time this, per this item sold. It was sent back because it didn't fit the person right. A severe thunderstorm watch has been issued for your location. Oh, dear. I hope Dexter doesn't hear that. Uh this is a Lauren Ralph Lauren black one piece swimsuit with a high back and it ties around the neck. Uh, and that sold for $19, a, a best offer I took on it, and it had free shipping on it. <clears throat> so, Tord, size zero. I think I got this from Bumblebee, if I'm not mistaken. This had little uh, flowers on it and a little girl, if you look at it real close, it's a little girl with a long dress on. She's watering flowers, like watering a garden. Tiny little print on it. But it was a size large, which is, it says towards size zero, but that's their size large. So um, that sold for $17.00. And that was a Poshmark sale, and it went to Spring Hope, North Carolina. The next thing is an eBay sale uh, by Bowden, a women's knit top. And this was a size medium, and it sold for a best offer of $18. It had ruffles around the neck and around the sleeve cuff. <clears throat> and that sold for... I told you, $18. That went to Amherst, uh, Massachusetts. I'm not sure if I ever sold anything to Massachusetts before. <laughs> uh, Lane Bryant. Another thing that has sold before came back, and I sold it again. It sold for a best offer of $23. It went uh, priority shipping. And they paid shipping, and it went to Pleasure Ridge Park, Kentucky. <clears throat> this was an old piece of jewelry of mine I found in my jewelry box. Really, I was selling the brooch because the brooch is vintage. It's an old 
piece I've had for a long, long time. The earrings weren't old, but I just put them with it because they sort of matched. So I sold it as a set, and it sold for $14.99. And uh, with, they paid $4.50 in shipping, and that went to Newcastle, Delaware. <clears throat> This is a shirt I've had for a while because I don't buy this brand anymore. Uh, Pronto Umo men's long sleeve tan dress shirt, extra, extra large. Unless Bumblebee sent this, I'm not real sure. I've lost track anymore of who sent what when. So the thing I'm going to do now is, you know, the eBay provides you with a space like with a... Uh, where you can put a custom number. Uh, nobody can see it but you on your listing. And I'm going to put in there from now on whether these things are from BB, Bumblebee, or Thread Up. So I will know then when I sell something. I don't know why I didn't think of that before. But this sold for $17.99, which was the sale price. They paid $4.50 in shipping and it went to. Uh, Charleston, West Virginia. And Sue, look what I sold. You said that these, this would never sell, or why would anybody buy this? This was from my uh, box that I got from Wholesale Ninjas of the health and beauty items. Uh, vapor rub. This was lavender scented uh, Vicks vapor rub. And this sold for $8.99, free shipping. And it went to, somebody wanted it, in Puerto Rico. So this went to San Juan, Puerto Rico. <clears throat> then we have a little pair of American Eagle Outfitters women's new with tags, uh, blue cuff shorts. I'm not sure if this was from Bumblebee or if this was one of the many shorts that I bought when I bought a whole lot of them. Uh, it had a cuff on. They were sh real short. This I took, did take a best offer uh, of $20, even they, the, though they were new with tags. I probably should have waited. It didn't have the price tag on there. It was broken off. but. Uh, yeah, they were nice new shorts, and they went to Morgantown, North Carolina, and they paid four fifty in shipping. Here's a Bowden uh, dress that I had just put on not too long ago. This came in one of the boxes, either Bumblebees or Thread Up. Not sure. Uh, this sold as a best offer for $20, and this went to St. George, Maine, and they paid $4.50 in shipping. Um, English Laundry. I think I've had this a while. This is another brand I don't buy anymore. I used to think it was... Uh, Maybe it used to be, maybe it used to sell better than now, but it doesn't sell well anymore. <clears throat> and I stopped buying it, so that's why I'm thinking it was probably older. But that sold for best offer of $20, and that had free shipping on it. And uh, that went to Seneca, South Carolina. Here's a um, Poshmark sale, the other one, Chelsea and Theodore. This was a fitted teal colored long sleeve sweater and uh, sold in the middle of the hot streak here. And um, it sold for $17. And out of that, I got $13.60. Because Poshmark tells you exactly what you're going to get out of it. So. It was a medium fitted sweater. <clears throat> Here's a polo golf, uh, Ralph Lauren golf shirt. 
in this dark pink with navy stripes on it. And this went for $17.75. I'm not sure why that it went. It must have been, that must have been a best offer because it's not the sale price. And some people offer strange amounts <laughs> like this. Uh, $17.75, which I must have taken, obviously. And they paid $4.50 in shipping. And it went to Flushing, New York. And here's a pair of American Eagle Outfitters shorts. I think this is one that I had bought in my bunch of shorts. So these were gray with these orange flowers. It was really cute little booty shorts. Uh, size, they were new with tags also, this pair. They were denim, but they were this pattern denim. And they sold for a best offer of $20, which seems to be the going rate for short shorts that I'm getting <clears throat> lately. So they paid shipping, and it went to Kenny Bunk, Maine. Then I sold a Lacoste. I don't have many of these left, any Lacoste. Uh, I sort of stopped buying them. I got really afraid I'd buy a uh, fake one. So this was just a size three, which is a fr French sizing, which means it's actually a men's extra small uh, lavender polo shirt. And it is authentic. I checked out all the things you're supposed to check out on it. And I sold it for the sale price of $22.49. <clears throat> and it went right here to Lakewood, Ohio, up near the lake. Uh, near Cleveland, so not far. <clears throat> it's a pair of Nike ACG women's Capri pants in a size 6. I took a best offer of $15.50 on these. I've had these for a while, I think, seems to me. And... Uh, Capris don't seem to sell very well, even though I sold two in this bunch. Uh, that Lane Bryant pair and this pair. So, But anyway, they went to uh, somebody in Bryan, Ohio. Now, Bryan, Ohio is where my father-in-law was born. <laughs> I've been to Bryan, Ohio. It's in way uh, west, almost to the border of Ohio in Northwest Ohio. And yeah, I've been to those little towns. Uh, here's a pair of uh, women's trousers, new with tags, ben Bennington, Bennington. Uh, these were uh, new with tags, I said that. $22.49, they went for the sale price. They paid $5 in shipping, and uh, they went to Mont Bellevue, Texas. So this up here looked kind of funny on this. I thought, don't tell me I missed a big mark. And here's the tag that was hanging out there. I should have probably picked a better place to hang the tag out. But... Uh, <laughs> That's where it was. And they sold, so I guess it was all right. Now, here's something I just listed. I sold this in less than 24 hours, which makes me afraid I probably put it on for too low of a price. But it sold to a very slim, tall person because this was a skinny, slinky little maxi dress, and it was so long. Of course, you can hem it because there's no slit in it. So they could hem it to whatever length they need. But uh, it did sell for the sale price of $29.69. And it went, uh, they paid shipping. It weighed this slinky, like traveler, like Chico's Travelers, that slinky fabric. It weighs a lot. So this long dress weighed over a pound. and. Uh, it went to Brooklyn, New York, 
they pay nine dollars and ninety cents for shipping but I did get it in a padded flat rate for seven fifty two so I did make like three more dollars on this dress uh, more than the twenty nine sixty nine so that's a little better anyway so I was really surprised that that sold so fast you never know D K N Y they didn't seem to have a big resale value when I looked them up the comparables but <clears throat> then I sold this uh, Tommy Bahama women's 100% silk sh casual shorts uh, they were pleated in the front they were all of green and those sold as an offer to watchers I had just sent out the offer and within an hour they sold to, to somebody picked up that offer for 1877 and those went to Long Beach Indiana now I also put something else on here I wanted to show you I hope it comes up because I wasn't sure if I could do this yes I bought a new hose for out front this is one of those garden hoses that it's small and it's very lightweight and it droops over your arm. You can hang it over your arm like a noodle. I mean, it's, it's very pliable. And it expands when you turn on the water. And it comes with a card. I'll show you the card when I get off here. Uh, it, I bought the uh, hose. This came with its uh, sprayer also. It's 50 foot when it's extended after you turn the water on it ex it grows it really does it kind of spooky it grows and then when you shut the water off it shoots well it doesn't shoot it slowly crawls back to its little size and when you get it it's no more than it's probably not even 20 feet long it's probably like 15 feet long there's a huge difference but it was sort of fun but I needed a hose for out front and uh, you do have to take care of these hoses my daughter has one and uh, you can't you have to leave it under the I put it under the bush out there in the shade number one and then you take it you drain it of course each time and in the winter you for sure drain it and take it inside I think uh, that's probably the the way you would wreck it the quickest if you didn't do that. Uh, so I wanted to show you that that I got. It's my new purchase of the week. Oh, so let me try to get back here. Here I am. That dingle was either they had just paid for the item that I sold a little while ago or maybe it's something new I don't know uh, let's see now because I can't read these things while I'm showing you so I have to come back here and let's see uh. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. Chicken PMS. She needs some chocolate. Maybe, yeah. Uh, shame on her. She was, yes, that was, that hurt. There definitely is a pecking order in a flock. Sometimes it changes. <clears throat> like she was off, she was out of the flock because she was broody for so long. And they just didn't let her back in the flock. Uh, they put her down to the bottom. I don't think she was real high in the pecking order anyway. But uh, she's really at the bottom now. And they do peck. They do uh, pick on her. You love these nature dogs. <laughs> You, you know what they say, poop runs downhill. They 
pick on her and she picked on you. <laughs> right. She's mad. Mm -hmm. You think the pronto umo must be from must, might be from you. Yeah, yes, it could very well be. I think the A and E shorts are mine. Do you really? I do. I've been doing really well with the shorts this summer. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Bowden was thread up. Okay. Well, from now on, I'm going to put that in my listing, uh, who it's from, so I can uh, keep track, at least of the newer items I get. So, yeah. I need another box also, Bumblebee. I just have a few more things uh, to photograph upstairs. It's so awful hot up there, though. Uh, I have to do any photographing that I want to get done. I have to do like six in the morning and it's still hot because it's been super. We have heat advisories out. It's going to be with the heat index. It's going to be 105 here today. We expect the real temperature to be 96. So maybe when this front rolls through, it'll knock it down a little bit, but it's so humid. It's just like breathing water. If you feel like you're drowning, it's horrible out there. I won't let the dog out much. He's sleeping from his pill, I think, already. And I don't even want the cat out there. You know, Ellie goes out and lays in the sun, and she has this huge, thick coat, double coat. Maybe that protects her, and she doesn't get as hot. But you would think, heavens. You'd think she'd be so hot, she, she wouldn't be able to stand it. But I've kept her in. Mama Cat doesn't, or, yeah, Mama Cat doesn't go out. And, <clears throat> yeah, I like that hose, too. Uh it just depends on how much somebody wants some, how much they'll pay. That's true. The DKNY box here. The DKNY dress pays a good portion of the thread up box. Yes, that's true. I like when that happens. <laughs> okay. I, uh, what else was I going to talk? I found a new uh, YouTube person that I, I ran across her by accident. And I s watched her, one of her videos, and she's sort of fun to watch. And she sells such a variety of things mostly on eBay, uh, that uh, she's fun to watch. And it's amazing of, to see what she sells. She sells everything. I mean, she loves to go thrifting, especially right now to garage sales and things. I don't know what state she's in, but it showed one of her new videos, her recent videos from yesterday or the day before was her garage sailing. And it was making me really nervous. Nobody had masks on. And this one woman was really close to her talking up a storm. And I'm thinking, why don't you people have masks on? Maybe she's in a state that they don't, that's really low and they don't, you know, haven't talked about the masks too much. They're pretty much mandatory now here. Medina County isn't really mandatory yet. It's strongly advised. But where my daughter and son lives, it's mandatory. It's mandatory in all the stores now. In these stores, too, like Target and Walmart and Kohl's and any stores here are mandatory masks in the grocery stores. So I don't go out anymore, hardly. Uh, I wondered if anybody, I was watching 
Oh, I wanted to tell you the name of this one girl that I was watching on YouTube. Her name is Shell Bell. S H E L L dash B E L L E. Shell Bell. And she's a young girl, and her uh, fiance, her and the two of them do this together. But I think he has a regular job also. But but they go garage sailing and thrifting together. And she has an amazing variety of things. You moaning, Dexter? So um, if you want to tune in on her, she has a huge amount of followers, but I just found her. Yeah. You go out to feed your strays, and then I'm covered in sweat instantly. It's awful. Yes, it's awful. Huh? Masks are mandatory now in Michigan after our cases started going back up. Yep. Yes, they're, they're talking about shutting down things in Cuyahoga County, which is where my son and daughter are. My daughter's so afraid that they're going to shut her bar down again, and then she won't have any income at all. Zero. Even though she can do her photography, because she only does outside things. <clears throat> this is a long one. I have to read this. The numbers of the COVID positives is so jacked up, I don't know what to think. That's what my daughter says. They count every person who's had contact with the positive as positive for COVID, for COVID. I know. And every person that dies, if they, no matter what they really die of, if they have COVID, they count it as a COVID death. I'm aware of that. But still, uh, you, can't, you can't just ignore that the numbers have gone up so much, you know. Like they said they were doing, they had like a 20% testing rate over our state, but the, the, the numbers went up 200%. So that it's not just because think people are getting tested more. You know, that's what my daughter kept saying. It's just that they're testing more. Well, no, it's beyond that. Yes, a couple of news stories here have had to retract numbers. That's when they admit that they've made a mistake. Yeah, and I keep hearing about Florida has fudged numbers so bad nobody believes their numbers either. But I don't know. <clears throat> Our cases are going up because of the bar activity. Yes, and the 4th of July. That's what they say in, in Ohio, too. They think it's number one, 4th of July, but also the bar and restaurants. People were going into bars and restaurants and not paying any attention to the six-foot rule or to the masks. So uh, now it's mandatory. So not only the workers in the restaurants and bars have to wear the masks, which was mandatory before, but now the patrons have to too. And you say, how can you go to a restaurant and eat with a mask on? Well, you can take your mask down only to eat, and then you have to put it right back up again. And they have been checking. They started checking the last two nights in restaurants in the Cleveland area. And this will expand. And uh, I don't know if, who's doing the checking, whether it's they want the health department to police this. Uh, but they they shut down a few uh, restaurants and bars last night or the night before last that they weren't observing the six foot rule or the mask rule. Now I think you have one chance, and the second time if you get a second warning, they can actually pull their liquor license. So none of them want that to happen because. It's really hard to get your liquor license back. I 
It's interesting how the Democratic states are doing. States are doing fine. No tax revenues coming in during the lengthy shutdown. I don't know. I don't get into politics at all. But uh, I don't know who's what states are Republican and what states are Democrat. <clears throat> But anyway, it's depressing, it's worrisome. I just have to decide that I'm just here in my beautiful house that I love with my animals. <laughs> just go out when I absolutely have to, to just pick things up. Death uh, cases are going up, but death rates are improving. Yes, uh, that's true. I did hear that. That seems to be the case, which is, that's good. Uh, that seems to, that seems to say that those cases are more for, are more from testing. The cases go up because and a lot of them aren't even, don't even have symptoms or they're not very sick. They don't have to go to the hospital, but the death rates are still going down or they're at least level. But there's a lot of states that the hospitals are being overwhelmed again. And that is bad. <clears throat> God is in control, even when we feel out of control. I know, I try to keep that in mind all the time. <laughs> I have something now on my phone that comes on in the morning. It's a Bible verse and comes on at night. There's another one to read at night. And so far, I like them. It's called King James Version, I think, is just the name of the app. Uh, but you can be notified uh, with a banner, with a with an alarm. <laughs> First, I put notif sound notifications on, and it it came on so loud it scared me to it just scared me. Psalm ninety one. That is my favorite verse. He will cover you with his feathers. Yes, <clears throat> I love that verse. 10,000 may fall by my side, but it shall not come near me. That's a good affirmation to say. Yes. I used to have one, took it down, because it was, got all wrinkly from, it was in the bathroom where I'd see it every morning and I'd read it in the morning, but it got all crinkled up from the, from the steam of the shower and stuff. And I took it down and now I can't think of it anymore. I'll have to find it again. Heaven is the great destination to look forward to. I know. Uh, Illinois and New York, very democratic. I don't understand why our numbers are not back in danger zone after all of Chicago's going on. Yeah. You find as many fear not Bible verses as I can find. Yes. Okay, let's see what else do I have to say here. Did I tell you about the bumblebees I have in my garage? Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this last time or not. I have um, a few years back when my cats were 
in the garage. They weren't indoor cats. They were had come from the from being barn cats. And uh, I had two cats in the garage for a while. And I would put a heat lamp out there in the winter. It was very dangerous it, for I don't know how many years. I had a heat lamp hanging in there. I'd put on at night in the winter for them. And they'd lay up on this uh, cushion I made for them. But besides that, I also made them, I got a big Rubbermaid tote. And then you, you insulate it. And then you put a smaller Rubbermaid tote in there. And you, you cut doors in them. And it's like this insulated place that anything wild that comes into the garage could go in. And this is for, for temperatures well below zero if they really need a place to get out of the cold. And I would keep it in there. And sometimes a cat would go in there and sometimes not. But it's it, I never took it apart. It's been in there for, oh, probably six, seven years. Well, something started pulling the insulation out of it. And I didn't know, I thought maybe the raccoon was messing with it because those youngster raccoons, they're out, they're, they don't live in my garage anymore, but they keep coming back because they know that there's might be food in there. Uh, so they keep coming back and I thought they were messing with this insulation. So I was looking, looking and looking at it. And all of a sudden I saw a big bumblebee and it's like your bumblebee, bumblebee. <laughs> it's the yellow furry bumblebees The they're not aggressive. And they're, uh, they only sting if they feel really uh, threatened. And only, I think the, Either the female or the male can sting. I'm not sure which. But anyway, I saw this bumblebee fly in and go into this hole into the insulation. Now, I don't think that's very good for him because it's that fiberglass insulation. But I heard a long time ago, I heard bees don't have lungs. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, I forget how that came up one time, but I do remember that. You left me a message about listing in heat above, above up here. Saying. Francis preached to the animals, they say, yes. I used to have a St. Francis statue back when I had my big perennial gardens in the back. I don't know what ever happened to that. I think the ivy ate it too. <laughs> read up, read up. I'm looking for it. I'm looking for the listing in the heat. <clears throat> about the shopper hours, you mean? No, that's not about listing in the heat. He said, "Your uh, the hospital increases six percent. It depends on the state. I think it's Texas and Florida that are getting overwhelmed." Oh, here it is. Okay, now you need to list items from around the house in your light box downstairs during the heat wave. I'm working on getting a box together. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yes. You know, I do pretty well on my things that I get from around the house. 
not all of it, not my China and stuff doesn't seem to do too well, but sort of the miscellaneous strange things. Uh, yeah, my light box, I can do right here in the air conditioning. You know, I, I only have in this whole big house, just the downstairs, I only have two window air conditioners. The one back in this room here, back there, you can almost see the window it's in. Uh, it's a big one. Uh, it required a 220 line. It's, uh, it throws off a lot of cool air. But I only have that one, and then I have a small one in my dining room at the other end of the house. And those two units keep my whole downstairs cool. Of course, it costs me a fortune in electricity. <laughs> but uh, my whole house is electric. It's my electric bill is always over 200 a month. Mm. You'll have to call him back to the hive. <laughs> yes. Mm. Yes, they got away from you. So when they come tomorrow and the girl's going to clean out the garage, I'm thinking, and she says she's allergic to bees. So I hope she has her, her uh, antidote with her. But I don't think these sting. But you can't be jiggling them around too much. So I'm thinking if we take from the back of the box, just take that box and take it outside and put it somewhere where it's sort of protected outside, she won't have to worry about it. Uh, maybe your husband could do that for us right away. And she could stay out of there till uh, he does that. Because she's going to clean out my garage. I certainly hope it's cooler because if she if it's not cooler than today, she's not going to get any help from me. <clears throat> and I really have to go out there and say what I want and don't want. Uh, the oddball items that you think you should just pitch. Right. Those are the things that seem to sell. You're right. Strange and weird sells very well. Yeah. And the little, th the, the beautiful china pieces and things that I had, I've sold a couple pieces, but those are the things I thought would do real well. And no, maybe because there's too many of them. Raccoon babies are little dem demolition experts. They certainly are. They're almost full grown now, but you can tell they're young. They're just, they're not near as big as mama, but there's two of them. I think they work together <laughs> every night. They're in there. I don't even know how they're getting in because I close the garage door. They get in there through the overhang somehow. And every night they dump over the cans of chicken scratch and chicken feed. They don't eat either one of them. They just dump them. So I hardly have anything in them. I stopped putting my bird seed out there because they will sort through the bird seed and eat the sunflower seeds. So my cans are all in there serving no purpose because I have to keep all my seeds and my chicken feed, my chicken scratch, bird seed, everything in the trunk of my car. And I keep the mealworms because they like those too. I keep the mealworms inside my house by the back door. So, <laughs> yeah. I need to put, I don't know, maybe if I put some cat food outside 
and sort of keep them from going in the garage, they'll know to look someplace else. I'll put some dish, uh, dishes of cat food out and move it further and further away. Maybe I should do that. Yeah, I do open. It is normally open all the time, but when I had it open before, it was a big dark, looked like a big dark hole back there. So I just shut it a little bit. It's cooling. It's still cooling here. Yes, I would love to have a, a video cam. Uh, set one up in the garage and see what in the earth is going on in there every night. Every morning, that's one of the first things I do, is clean up the garage. Uh, does anybody know, I'm trying to find, I, I'm almost out of vitamin pills. <clears throat> Multivitamins for women over 55. The, I've, I've gotten two so far that were so big I can't swallow them. Now, I can swallow big pills pretty well if they're really nicely coated and they're not chalky. They can't be that chalky, white, huge horse pills. But uh, I'm trying to find and order some multivitamins for women over 50. Does anybody know? They have to be small, petites or whatever they call them and not have any iron. Of course, the ones for older seniors don't have iron. For women, don't have iron in them. Uh, one a day petite vitamins. Have you seen, have you looked at the size of the pill, though? How big are they? They don't show you. They don't show you. I haven't seen the liquid. All I've seen is the gummy ones. I can't eat, I can't have the gummy ones. Think about it. I'm going to have all my teeth out. I can't have anything I have to chew. Yeah. No chewing. Sue has the answer about the petite ones. Well, they say they're petite. What does that mean? And a lot of the one a day, if you read of how many you take, it says that they're one a day vitamins, but you take two a day. I don't really want to take two a day. I want to take one a day. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Yeah, they, that would have worked. I have chewy... I have gummy calcium pills out there that pretty soon I won't be able to take them. Liquid vitamins. I wonder if they have those for women over 55. I didn't look for them, but so far they haven't mentioned those when I've gone through them all. Online, the one a day are showing small like a penny. They're not round as big as a penny round, are they? That would be big. I know. That's why it is bad marketing. A lot of people, if you look at the, you know, there's they rate them. And if you look at the last star where somebody just gave them one star, that's what a lot of people are saying. They're bad advertising. They say one a day and you have to take two. <clears throat> there was one I looked up called micro pills. And you had to take three of those a day and they were very expensive. I guess the petites are smaller, so you need two. Maybe. Right now, I'm down to taking these. Really, they're empty now. And they're not for women, and they're not for over 55. 
They were really small little pills, but they hardly had anything in them, so they were probably worthless. But I took them for the last month or so because I ran out of my other ones. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Vitamins about the chicken pecking me. Oh, has anybody heard of these boxes of food that you can get? They're mailed. They come. They're delivered to you, and they're called imperfect foods. Imperfect foods. What they are, you can order produce. You can order meat. You can order uh, pantry items. I suppose it's like canned stuff, and I don't know. I have to look more into it. And uh, what else? Grains for breads and stuff. You can order one or all of them or whatever, and it comes, you, you get the box once a week, and you pay per box. You probably have to do a, you have to join probably. I haven't looked into it, but everybody that I've read about this loves these boxes that they call it imperfect food is because there's nothing wrong with this food, like the produce. That's what I would just get, the produce. It's like, it would be like you would grow in your garden. They aren't the perfect tomato. They may be lumpy here, lumpy there. They're still the perfect tomato, but they're not store quality like they don't look perfect like to put in a package that's what what it is that's what the imperfect means and uh stores that would would sort those out they would be just thrown out so this company has taken you know that's it saves all this food from being thrown out it's not old food it's not old stuff it's just imperfect shapes and things. But everybody that gets the produce says how great it is. So I may try just the produce. Ugly food that's good for you. Yes. Right. Right. They just look strange. Has anybody tried these boxes? Just looked online. The photos are historical. The carrots are weird shapes. I know. Most of the time, the carrots... I slice up into tiny carrots and cook them, or I give them to the horses. They don't care. And uh, I don't think it's scratch and dent as far as cans go. I don't know. I didn't look into the, the can stuff. I don't want to just order meat because it'll be red meat also, and I don't particularly want chicken shipped to me. So I was thinking of just ordering the produce box. And it's, it's, I think they said 16, you get two or three pounds of food or more. I forget how much it is. It's a lot, people say. It's a lot you get for the week. And 16, this is just for the produce, $16 plus $4.99 shipping. So $21, you get produce. It's supposed to last all week. It would probably last me longer. I don't have to worry about produce. Whatever I don't use, my chickens will to get. So for sure, I would use all the stuff. So I'm sort of going to try maybe the produce. I'll let you know. You've heard good things about it? Yeah, the produce. Yeah. Yeah, they also, you know, that's the same company that they do meat and and uh, pantry items and grains, which is your breads and other grain things. So I may try that. <clears throat> uh, I think that's all. I was going to say, it's after 5, I don't see any big black clouds coming yet, even though they announced that uh, 
it's coming. It usually comes from this direction over here. But still looks okay. The dog is okay. Did you wake up? Dexter's here. Say hello, Dexter. Come back here. Come back here. Here's Dexter. Don't be nervous. So I'm going to close for now. And uh, I've been watching. The thing I was watching on TV before I came on here was a Tarzan movie. It was on, It's on Paramount. Tarzan, or maybe not Paramount. What was it on? Something else that has movies. But uh, this was a new Tarzan movie. It was Tarzan, the, the legend of Tarzan or something like that. I forgot about how much I used to enjoy Tarzan movies when I was really young, when I was a kid. That was the old Tarzan movies. Probably because of how he talks to the animals. Uh, but this, so far, this was pretty good that I was watching. And uh, I'll go finish watching that. I did all my listing this morning what I had left before I have to go photograph. And I will uh, be on Wednesday again. Maybe take some video outside if it gets cooler at all. I don't. I think we're supposed to have one day, which is tomorrow, which is supposed to give us a break and then go right back up to heat again. So, yes, have a good week, everybody. He hasn't barked yet. The melatonin maybe made him forget about dinner. <laughs> anyway, I have to go feed him before he gets too nervous to eat. So I'm going to uh, close. Bye, everybody. See you on Wednesday. Bye. <laughs>